In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. You were that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Whiskey Ginger Podcast. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests. Don't be flattered, but I do mean it about this one. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Stefano. Thank you. Thank you. How you cheers, doing? Cheers. Cheers doing to you. Good. Here we go. Coming. Here we go. A little Appreciate sip it, brother. Mm. 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 This is good. Tastes fucking great. Okay, I have to give a shout out real fast do before it. we go. So Rick, my boy that I met in Austin, um, I'll put up his Instagram. He hand makes shit and he loves bourbon and whiskey. This stuff... Is Joseph Magnus cigar blend bourbon? Look at that shit. It's not cigar a plug. Blend. It's not a bu- it's not a plug for cigar bl- blend bourbon. But he sent that to me, and it's fucking good. Very good, Joseph. And look at this. He's he made me this. I don't know. Can they see that? Can they see that shit? Yeah, they can. We'll punch in on that. What is it for your electrical this is outlets? An outlet cover. Because let me tell you something. See, you see under there? There's an electrical outlet right there. Right there. Disgusting. The the, the, the cunt fans got so annoyed that it was broken for a while. Yeah. And they couldn't stop complaining. It's the only thing I can look at, other than the fucking guest. Yeah. Other the than the human beings that are performing here. Didn't for care. You. Didn't yeah. give a shit. So look, he made this because he's a because he's a G. So yeah. shout out to Rick for making this. This was so cool. But yeah. I'll put his information because he hand make dude. He hand makes all sorts of shit. He's one of those people that you meet when you're out and you're like. What do you do? And he's like, everything and anything that you want. Yeah. And then you have a hard time explaining what we do because you're like, yeah. just entertain people, I mm-hmm. guess. But it's not, you know. And you know what's trust? Because it's like, I mean, that guy, he could easily have put arsenic in that. And, you know, we don't know. <laughs> That's what I think about. And I'm going all the way in then. Do it. You just had a, you just had a kid, so you might as well go for it. Well, yeah, she's, she's going to be four. And mm. I feel like, yeah. And I what feel like saying? she's got, no, it's fine. She's got to, uh, my goal is just to try as best possible to stay alive until she's at least 18. Because then I feel like when she's 18, she'll get full life insurance. She'll get all my life and insurance you're good to go. money and she's good. By the way, I'm going to keep saying you just had a kid until your kids are out of your house. I feel like you just had a kid is a thing I'll say forever. I still call her, I'm still like, oh, my baby, the baby. Are you picking up the baby? It's a baby. But it's like, you know, she's 40. She speaks, you know. Yeah, she, she has could, a bank account. Could, she, yeah, she could speak actually Chinese and Spanish. Shut up. I swear to God. You taught your kid Chinese? I didn't teach. No, no, no. I put. She's in a Chinese school, right? I not a, not a Chinese school. The, a lot of the kids in her class, uh, her preschool, are Chinese. Which, to be honest with you, I'm a fan of. My dad's not, but I'm a fan. Why is your, of the yeah, your dad's old my, school? He doesn't well, like. Well, my that. dad, yeah, my dad's just an old school guy. Like he still thinks, we're, like he will eat sushi because he thinks it's the enemy's food. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> He's still. I'm not gonna support. Those people over there after what happened. After how they snuck up on us like, in Hawaii, yeah. I will not eat sushi. Yeah, but my, my, dad, my dad's generation, I'll tell you, this is really funny. Because th- we're the same age. We're, you're in your mid-30s, right? 34. Yeah, 35. Yeah. Okay. But like it's the same thing because like yeah. my dad, he's just a dad dad. He's just an right. old school dad dad. Right. And when sushi, he's like now he understands it a little bit. For yeah. years, dads didn't even know what it was. But right. now I'm like, no, no, no. And he understands it, but he thinks he's hip. We go home. And uh, my little sister and I are, are hanging out, and he's like, "You guys hungry? You want a snack?" Yeah. I go, "Yeah." And he goes, "How about at a Mimi?" And I was like, "Oh man, this guy! Like he, he thinks he's on it." You guys want at a Mimi? Yeah. And I go, well, "You have at a Mame?" And he goes, "Yeah, yeah. Watch, watch." Yeah. And he, it's in the freezer. It's frozen, and he heats it up in the microwave. And I was like, "You're the best. I love Dude, you so much." Old school dads, you know, old school guys like they just don't understand. Like, I, I, I Giannis Papas, you know, Giannis. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a podcast with him, History Hyenas, and um, we do that. And uh, we were we always have smoothies. And um, my dad came to the studio once. And we were both drinking smoothies. Like, what do you do? Drink guzzling cum? And it's like, <laughs> no, we're just getting our antioxidants. You know what I mean? Like, we're getting like. Also, why would I drink a huge thing of cum? Yeah, what I was like, and so whose cum is berry? It's got it's you know fucking Blue light berry. purple. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's that's some infected cum. You ever had an STD? Yeah, I had one in college. Chlamydia, right? No, dude. This is I had a I had a gross one. Syphilis? I ha- no, not wor- I guess not gross and the worst. It's it looked worse. Okay. Cuz you don't know that you had the clap really, right? You just felt No, no, it. no. My, my my penis was dripping and my urine was scalding hot. But you can you can't look at your penis and go, "Oh, so I have something." It wasn't anything right. It wasn't anything on the skin Physical, but like I would right. get up and my dick would just be dripping. Ay. Yeah. No, I had um what's called molluscum. People at home will look it up. Oh, now. it's like HPV. It's like um it's like warts everywhere, right? It's yeah, it's on your it's on your pelvis. Yeah. Except it's curable, right? Like yes. it's HPV virus is in you. Molluscum is bacterial, so it was. I dude, I freaked out so bad. What happened? You just woke up I, with it. It was like two days after I slept with this girl. Were you using you a used condom? a condom? Okay, because it's on her pelvis, dude. So it right. rubs on your pelvis. So I went to the health doctor, f- panicked. You know that low, the on campus 
uh, and when right. I was in college. And I was so scared, dude. I really was. I was like, this is it for the rest of my life. I'm yeah. going to have these fucking things all over my... It wasn't on my dick, which was nice, yeah. but it was everywhere around it. Yeah. And, and, and she laughed at me. She was like, why are you freaking out? Because I was... She could tell I was sweating. I was ready to cry. I was like, how did this the rest of my fucking life? She was like, you just have this pill and this cream, and it's literally within less than 24 hours. Gone. <laughs> Gone. I never yeah. came back. No. It, I, it, it, was, it was like one of the greatest moments yeah. of like relief. I mean, I got genital warts, but it's like, you know, you remove them. It's mm-hmm. like you get a little speed bump on mm-hmm. the dick. Like everybody has HPV. Mm-hmm. I don't have any, I don't have herpes. I don't have, and I don't have any, and I don't have HIV. And but I, you and have I can, anal warts. I, I don't have anal warts, but I do have warts on my, I don't have them on my anus, but I do have a wart or two on my ass cheeks. Okay. But my doctor told me that genital warts can sometimes manifest on your ass cheeks because, you know, obviously when I was saying that, I was like, I, I swear I'm not gay. And he was like, well, you're, I'm like trying to convince him that I'm not gay. And he's right. like, I know you're not gay and it's okay if you are. I'm a doctor. He's like, but you can have warts that originated on your penis that you got from a woman and then they manifest on your ass because uh, the virus lives in your body. But obviously it's just more fire from my dad thinking that I'm gay. Cause, right. Cause I said, uh, you know, I had an ass wart. I like the doctor said, I, I don't care if you're gay, I'm a doctor. And then yeah. you're like, what well, could you fix that or something? Is there a way <laughs> you guys <laughs> yeah. got a pill? <laughs> we'll fix that up fast. Yeah, man. No, you, but uh, this is I great had, whiskey. This Holy is good, shit. right? This is really good. Yeah. The Joseph Magnus dude. I swear to God, I'm the mm. type of kid, I'm the type of kid where I don't really, I booze a little bit. I have a few brews, you know, like, you know, all my boys, like you, you grew up in Chicago. I grew up yep. in New York. It's the same type of thing, yep. just different accents, different teams. We grew up the same way. I, I if I have, a, if I have one more, like half of these and you gave me a Claritin D, if I have alcohol and antihistamine, I swear to God, dude, I'll suck your dick. <laughs> Right now, you I, go gay with if booze. you if you gave me a fucking Benadryl and another glass of whiskey, I swear to God, you're going to be knocking your cock off my uvula <laughs> by the end of this podcast, and I'm that's 100 percent a truth. Did you have your tonsils removed? No, I didn't, but I have to get them. Actually, you got it. Well, then I'll help that out. I'll push him down a little Dude, bit further. I, I, I'm beginning. First of all, every time I go down on a girl, every time, mm-hmm. Andrew, I get a sore throat. 100 percent. Oh, the because t- your tonsils are still there. Well, the right? do- easily infected. It got to the point where I, the ENT, ear, nose, and throat doctor. I said, to, I just said to him. I mean, there was a female. Um, his, his assistant was a female, hot, smoking hot girl. I was going in there to get my sinuses looked at, and um, I said, uh, I said, look, you know, um, I know this has nothing to do with my sinuses, but every time I go down on a girl, every time I'm giving oral sex to a woman, I get a sore throat. Mm. It's not like it's the same girl who could have a dirty pussy. I'm talking about every girl. Tens of thousands of women. Tens of thousands of women. Yeah, no a ton cocks. Of girls. No, no, no cocks. I swear, no, no cocks. <laughs> I, I, every time I get a sore throat. And then he looked at my tonsils and he said, Well, your tonsils are so big right now that the bacteria that is on a very clean girl's vagina gets stuck on your tonsils and manifests into strep throat or Whoa. some type of other infection. You're like a petri dish. Exactly. He wow. said, Now, but he's a, some ENTs are hell bent. He's one of them against not removing tonsils for any reason in adults other than if it's cutting off your breathing at night, which in my case it's not, because he said the tonsillectomy as an adult is so painful and such a big um, process, such a big recovery process that mm. he just thinks like it messes with people's lives. Is it a risk? You can't die from it, can you? <sighs> well, no, you can't. I mean, you could die from technically any surgery. I mean, you could get bleeding in the back of your throat. But, but I mean, it, as you get older, is it more of a risk of getting hurt? Is that what, is that? No, the, no, no. I, no, I think it's just, I think it's just because I don't know. To be honest with you, to be fair, I don't know the answer why it's not as risky for kids. But I do know this. They don't remove tonsils nearly as much as they did 30 years ago. Like both our parents, I'm sure, have their tonsils out. My yeah. mom and dad both do. It's just like a thing that I happened. I got mine. You got yours out. What? No, no, no. I got them in. I'm you got them in. I've never t- had them taken out. But, I've never had my wisdom teeth moved either. But do you have a pro- problem? Have you ever had sore throat problems or sick? Like I'm no, always sick. No. I'm the guy who's always sick. You said you, you're Italian. I think are you Jewish? No, Italian. You, well, But this, you're always sick. This is the thing. I am. Half Italian, half Irish, I thought, but then I did the Ancestry.com, yeah. found that I'm 80% German. Uh. So somebody's been lying somewhere. So now, you know, I'm fucking very organized all of a sudden. Right. Now I'm just, now I'm just, I got plans. <laughs> You're making plans all the time. <laughs> yeah. You thought you were 50-50. I thought it was, I, listen, let's be honest. Mm. Again, you're a Chicago kid. I'm a New York kid. C- kids from Chicago, New York, Boston, Philly, 
when you're white, you're just half Italian and half Irish or 100% Irish and 100% Italian. That's how it is. Nobody cares about your white backstory. It's like, oh, I'm actually Ukrainian. It's like, is it closer to Italy or Ireland? Like, which way do you want to go? Because (laughs) we don't have time. It's like, you're just, that's what you are. Estonia, I don't know know what it is. And you're either, when you're Latino, at least in New York, it's like, are you Puerto Rican or Dominican? Like, oh, Venezuela. It's like, which one is it closer to? Because I, I... that's I all I know. identify with. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's like right. everybody's Puerto Rican, every white guy's Italian or Irish, and every guy who's darker is just black. Your baby mama's Puerto Rican. She's she's 100. She's she, 100, 100 Puerto she's Rican. She's 100% Puerto Rican from Brooklyn, like a Brooklyn Puerto Rican girl. What do you, what do you think? Tattoo in her tit. Oh, which, what is it of? Butterfly tattoo in her tit, which she said what, she was What like, else could it be? Well, she said she got a butterfly on her heart because her mom's favorite animal is a butterfly, and but then she got breast implants. So, you know what I mean? You didn't, you didn't figure... The physics was off there because now you have a tattoo on your tit. But but her mother still loves and respects butterflies. Her mother fucking loves butterflies. If you don't love butterflies, <laughs> you're a real you're piece an ISIS of shit. dude. Yeah, what are you dude. in the caliphate? Who do you who do you think is a tougher Puerto Rican chick, a Chicago Puerto Rican chick? Because you know Chicago Puerto Ricans. That's a big. The Puerto Rican Day Parade in Chicago basically breaks breaks the city. Do you right. know about this? I mean, it's like no, what do you mean chaos. breaks the city? I mean, it's chaos. Yeah, it's yeah. pure chaos. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I I would love to know. I wish we don't have a guy that looks shit up. That's Rogan's show. I did that last time. I said, Jamie, look it up. The guy that yeah. fucking, the kid at Rogan's show. But I would no, love to know the percentage of Puerto Rican population in Chicago versus New York. I, I wonder. I, I don't I don't know. I don't I don't know. I'm sure once who this episode has, comes out. Hey, Google, who has more Puerto Ricans? Or has my dad, who's got more Puerto Ricans? Who's he got calls them Puerto, Puerto Ricans. Puerto Rico. I think it's New York. Yeah, it might be. I think it's New York. But yeah, no, it's just, it divides New York too. I like, you know, it took me a while, but like then I start to catch on when I was like a teenager. Right. Every the Puerto Rican Day Parade was always the first Saturday in June, and my Huge. dad was always took me on vacation on the first Saturday in June. <laughs> my dad was always in going upstate, getting, yeah. and I was like, you know, now we're, I know why. I mean, I, we're see, going to the Catskills. Pack it up. Pack it up. See, but that's the thing. That's karma right there. It's like my dad was a good guy, but you know, old school. Like got that little like fucking old racist, old white I get racist. It. Yeah. But now he's got a Puerto Rican granddaughter. So now everything's changed. Right. And now he's like, and I swear to God, this is true. Like two weeks ago, we're talking. He goes, you know, your daughter's, your grand, you know, your daughter's Puerto Rican. I was like, yeah, no, I know. And I was like, his mother has a tattoo on her tit. Like, we, all, we know. <laughs> and like, you know. And he goes, yeah. He goes, well, you know, they don't have sweet 16s. I was, I was doing some research. They're not going to have a sweet She's saying, three years old. Saying, quin, like a quinceañera is what he's talking about. Yeah, but instead of saying that, he goes, he goes, at 15, they're going to have a quesadilla. <laughs> I swear to God. And I was like, what? And he goes, they're gonna have a, uh, a uh, what do you call it, a quinceanera? I said, a quinceanera. You said quesadilla. He goes, what are you, fucking Rosetta Stone? They're I mean, have a cheese like, quinceanera yeah, for like, their birthday. And it's the same thing. He's like, yeah, this guy sits with his boyfriend and speaks Spanish. But <laughs> my dad is one of those guys where I would assume like your dad, you know, similar, it seems like similar, where like, he says stuff like that, right? Oh, uh, you know, the old corny dad hack jokes. Oh, mm-hmm. it's hot. what are you, Puerto Rican? Don't steal my silverware. Bullshit like that. That's whatever. That, you know, you get it when you just grow up that way. But New York, Chicago, like we're all on top of each other. So there's like a lot of love no matter what race or religion you are. Yeah. It's like, all. Well, so when Hurricane Sandy happened in New York in like uh, 2012, it like destroyed New York City, it fucked everything up. And um, Staten Island, where my father lives, has a, has a, got ravaged but my dad's house was relatively inland so it didn't get damaged so my there was a lot of like puerto rican and mexican people that lived by the water and their houses were destroyed and they mm-hmm. lived in like bungalows and shit and they were completely displaced and my dad every day for three weeks went rented a u-haul truck went down helped them gave them supplies let two families stay in his house for two weeks each took the kids to school, made sure, you know, got the fathers to work and all that. But, you know, all the while, you know, like one of the families, the guy's name was Jose, but he kept calling them Juan. He was like, Juan E. And the guy's like, my name Jose. And he's, he's like, like, Juan, you're nuts. Juan, come on. You're fucking. crazy, Juan. He's like, Juan, Jose, it doesn't matter. You know? <laughs> Get so, over here, Salsa. Come so here. it's like some fucking millennial, you know, cuck will be like, your dad's racist and he's the problem. But it's like, really, my dad actually is those people look at my father like he's a member of their family now because right. of how I mean he's I don't want to say he saved their life that's a little dramatic but the I mean he didn't have to do that and he took I mean took families in right. to his home for two weeks each so it's like that's the kind of guy my dad is he's like he's, he says this shit like a lot of old school guys say but his mo- his intentions are always great but I think this is only because and, and this is dude honestly my family is the same way right there's when you grow up I feel like in major metropolitan areas there's something about 
racial mixing and racial clashing, so, so to speak, that like creates a little bit of tension. But it's also, ironically, I talk about on stage, it's where a lot of love comes from. So Absolutely. You don't have a minority friend that you don't make fun of. That's how you guys joke around with each other. Absolutely. But there's this weird line of white people that don't like to joke around about those things because they're probably not really in tune with any other races, yeah. right? So that's like our parents' generation. I think I'm the same way. I'm not even yeah. gonna lie. But like, I think the the comfort comes from uh, joking about the discomfort, right? Right. But unfortunately, there is like this new thing of like, that's the issue, your dad. It's like, my sure. father jokes around, We he, he'll joke around. He's the first fucking guy. He, first of all, I can't say enough good. He's the most selfless dude on the fucking planet Earth. He'll do everything for everyone else before he'll do it for before Andrew's him. dad raped me. <laughs> twice by yeah. the way he stayed what an idiot yeah, what he an stuck idiot. around <laughs> but he's one of the greatest yeah. dudes in, in yeah. terms of like giving for other people and he's the first guy to make a joke but also the first guy to do something good for someone else exactly and I just think like there is this weird idea that like that is that the millennial idea that 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 he is the the issue or the problem but I just we need to be communicating more I think I think you've, yeah. you've talked about it a lot actually yeah about like why why both on your podcast and and in your stand up, like why don't why don't we all talk? I don't understand why none of us talk. Yeah, like you have to be you have to hate because you you don't agree with me. I yeah, think it's really fucking weird. Yeah, it's 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 like the thing is everybody I feel want wants to live like in this black and white world now. When truthfully, like we live in the gray zone, right? Yeah. Like it's a gray world, but you want things to be black and white. It's not black and white. No. It's like. There's so many kids out there. There's millennial kids. Mostly, it's, mostly it's a younger generation. You very rarely meet a person our age or older that you know is looking to be in attack mode and is offended by everything you say because we've like lived a life and it's like we understand like hey like let's be honest. I think a lot of people are just bored. I mean, ask it. Ask a 22 year old in Syria if he would care if you called him by a gender he wasn't comfortable with. I don't think that kid gives a fuck <laughs> no, because he's got way bigger problems. But right now, when there's actually no real problems, right? There's no real up. major problem. I mean, every country has issues. America, of course. But I mean, for people to say America's the worst place. I saw a list the other day. Some, you know, whatever bullshit or, uh, or you know, blogger put out. They ranked United States over Iraq for the worst quality of life the in the fuck, world. It's the just fuck nuts. Out of here. It's just nuts. That's absurd. It's They're at war every day. A There's war. people that have to avoid getting killed, killed every day. Every day. It's just I think a lot I think personally, I think and I think here's what I here's two things. One, I think we feel it more, you and I, because we're in entertainment. So we're around like the kings of this shit. Oh we're around God. like the people, especially you being in Los Angeles. Like way worse here. It's not as cra it, it happens in New York, but it's not as crazy in New York as it is out here. Right. Because this is like sometimes I feel like L.A. feels like a little island off the coast of real America where it's like even like the the the, the big issues like, you know, me too and all that stuff. All that stuff is extremely important. I mean, I have a daughter, so it's like it's all extremely important. But like in New York, your average Joe Schmo may not even know what that is. Well, mo I, I think most people they're don't. like, what? What me, me? What me? What is it? Yeah, yeah me. I, what? Like even girls are like, I don't know. Like my kid's mom. I mean, she's a thirty-four year old woman, young woman. You know, like respects herself. Like she's like, hey, I, you know, she's yeah. like, I don't know, Chris. Like a lot of this shit just seems like everybody wants to be a victim now. People want to cry. It's like well, we hear it more than it, anybody else, yeah. right? Like, I, and multiple times I've heard people say to me. Uh, I don't know what that is when I reference something, right? right. I think I made a joke to a family member about tr the, the term transphobic. Okay. Uh, because it, something was written and I said, oh, it says you're transphobic. And I'm thinking I'm gonna get a good laugh. Yeah. And he was like, what? Yeah. I was like, it says you're transphobic, I'm fucking around. You're not, it's, it's it says something else. He's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And I was like, oh, right, that's, that's tr it's, it's a lot of terminology that we're used to because of the world yeah. that we live in. But then you just forget, so many people don't hear these phrases and terms, you know why? They're busy with like life and shit. It's, Real it's almost shit. the same thing where you're yeah. like, other people have a lot of other problems. Yeah, I but say I hate when people say that. By the way, that when they say for America is X Y Z. Yeah, it's stupid. The, the only because of this, the only people that say fuck America have never traveled the world. I know I sound like a privileged fuck cunt, but people who get to travel, it opens your eyes to yeah. go, wow, dude, we live in a great fucking country. Because yeah. I got to tell you, anybody that says we're not progressive, dude, yeah. we have a long way to go. I'm sure of course. we have a long way to go. Yeah, we're not done. No, but it, but there's parts of the world where women are still third class citizens. Of course, where homosexuals get stoned to death right. in public. Yeah, so don't fucking sit there and tell me we're the worst. Like I I don't like that attitude. I'm not I'm in, not trying in, to be a patriot. I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, in like, Syria when ISIS was running, they were throwing gay people off roofs. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yep. 
Like that doesn't happen here. No. Oh my you know? god. Oh my you know? god. Are you fucking kidding yeah, me? A fucking police state would take over. It's like <laughs> yeah. people are just throwing humans because their sexuality. Over. No, but but we we tend to be this country that loves and and honestly, that's kind of a good thing. If I'm going to give America a little bit more pride, is like. There is something good about winners always critique themselves, right? Sure. So we're America tries to be better and better and better. I think it's a good thing. I just don't like beat us in a world war and then talk shit. Then talk shit. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) This will be an isolated clip and then it'll get around the internet and be like (laughs) two white straight. Yeah, two alt right. Breitbart (laughs) retweets it. They fucking love us. Yeah, but that's the thing. Is like I've said it a million times. I don't agree with the hard right and I don't agree with the hard left. Mm-mm. I, I Extreme, think, I hate, oh. I like a guy down the middle that leans one way. Sure. Uh, you know, or just is in the gray zone. That's so I, t- I have a sister who's very uh, hard left and my father is very hard right and they both, I don't agree with either one of, right. out of one of their opinions at all. I, I have a good relationship with my mom and I agree with her because she's just a fair lady down the middle that leans one way on certain issues and I think that's a normal human being because I think the first point was, you know, about us being in entertainment so I think we feel it more. The second point is I think people being outraged right now is just a career choice. Yeah. I mean, it's a career because people don't want to actually fix the problems. Like, I'm sure you guys have spoken about it a million times, but like, and I know it's old news now, but like, just as an example, like the Kevin Hart ship with the tweets, it's like, if you have to go back 10 years in, in a guy's tweets, right, to find homophobic stuff, then hasn't he changed? Isn't that what you wanted? Right. But no, you're looking at, because it's like everybody says, oh, actions speak louder than words. That's what we've heard our whole life. Right. Well, in Kevin Hart's case, actions have spoken louder than words, yeah. right? But now you're switching it. Now, because you want, because you're, because you're, all you want to do is be a victim and all you want to do is be angry so now all of a sudden words are speaking louder than actions all of a sudden right wow. so it's like you switch shit around and it's like it's almost like and we do see it in entertainment we're like there's a lot here's what i want and i don't there's no way to object to, to objectify this there's no way to really even know if if i was the guy who did it my goal as a comedian though in my head is i want the respect for my peers and respect for myself i want to be a guy that people say about my work they're like Chris could have been funny and could have made it as a comedian in any generation. He's not just making it because of 2019 bullshit dynamics where like the comedians are doing very soft jokes with no punchlines, but they're saying the right political things so they're getting an applause break and it's going viral. I want a guy, I want somebody to be like, oh, I would have been funny in 1979 as I'm funny in 2019. That's what I, that's that's the mindset I have with each one of my jokes. Like, that's a good goal, man. That 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 that's how I try to think of it because I'm like I know certain comedians right now are getting things because of you know shit other than they're funny, and I'm not the one that's going to be like bitching about like why not me because I get I totally understand the dynamics. If I get things change, I get all, I understand all that. I'm just saying my goal as a comedian is I want to be a guy who my peers are like that guy would have been funny any time. You that's know? a po- well. The, here's why that's powerful. Dude, give me a fucking, give me an Allegra right now. I'm gonna give you give one. Give me an Allegra I'm D looking right at my now, fucking dick and you are gonna. By the way, this is the exact same size and width Dude, of my penis. This, this right here, just I'm, the stem. Yeah, that's absolutely. where my cock is. I'm gonna be Rigid, unraveling and ginger hairs off my tonsils <laughs> later tonight. <laughs> Come on, dude. You know I trim. Don't say Oh, yeah, true. Don't, baldy. Don't doubt the Baldy. Shout out to the Baldy. I lift and <laughs> lift and scrum. Lift and scrum. Dude, this is this is gonna crush on fucking in for gay people. Grinder. Grinder should sponsor this. Can I tell you something? My yes. gay audience is actually huge. Are you serious? It's huge. Perfect, dude. Yeah. You know why? Because I do Gays a lot are of, the uh, best audience. Well, here's why. Gays I, and black. I, I also do a lot of I do a lot of gay gay baiting because I think it's fun. Like mm-hmm. so I do I'll, I'll respect you know, it. Yeah, I'll do a lot of gay baiting for fun, and I used to get kind of Half of the people would talk shit, and then half of them would be like, this is just funny. This is just, yeah, just him funny. being hilarious. Like, I did an Instagram video, uh, I don't even know, a year ago, where my back is turned to the camera, and I was like, I'm sick of it. I'm sick and tired of, of people saying on the internet that I'm gay. I'm not gay. And when I turn around, I have a shirt on that says Power Bottom. And I was like, <laughs> I, I was like, I'm sick of it. This is bullshit. That's a 10 out of 10 yeah. video. <laughs> you know what's one of the funniest videos you ever tweeted out? It was a while ago. When you tweet out, you're like... Walking along Hollywood Boulevard and that guy's just jerking off. I used to, I said that, that's that's Hollywood. I said that to about thirty people. Yeah, that's is Hollywood. it still up on your Twitter? Like because no, it used to be up. one of your pinned tweets. Yeah, I thought yeah. they removed it or something. No, no, no. Actually, they I put it up on Instagram and they removed. So Instagram's rules are real fucking strict. Oh yeah, yeah, no nudity, all that stuff. No. So then I tried to have a friend edit something over the dick. Yeah. And I posted that again. They removed it again. God. So I was like, fuck it. And yeah, it's not even Instagram. That's people reporting you. Of like, course. Of course. Losers, Dude, man. Well, that, Twitter is the last the last place. And yeah. I don't even love Twitter as much as I like Instagram because it's just just the usability. And also Instagram's become, I mean, Twitter's become this political pundit platform where I'm oh, like, yes. oh my God, is everybody Trevor Noah? I mean, yeah, I fucking, yeah. well, the, you, yeah. you didn't used to be a political comedian. I don't know yeah. why everyone now, a comedian now, they're all, po- you can make your political statement online and also still make jokes. That's that. And also still make jokes. That's the thing. It's like, listen, you know, 
for me, like when I'm sitting home, like reading tweets on the toilet or whatever, my whole thing is like, yeah, if I follow comedians, it's like, you make your political point. Where's the punchline? Yeah. Where's, wh- be what funny. Fu- I don't give a fuck right. what you think about the world because you're a comedian, right. not an elected politician. <laughs> right. I don't, I couldn't care less right. what you fucking think of the world unless there's a joke. I mean, shut the fuck up. Right. Like that, when I look, I'm like, what does everybody just think they can do anything now? Yep. Because it's, cause you, the thing, the power of the retweet, it, the effect it has on the human ego is kind of mind blowing. I mean, somebody will say something and will get five retweets and they think what they said is profound, but really you're a fucking idiot, dude. Right, right. What you're saying, what you're saying, and you're only pa- the only reason why you're standing by that tweet, let's be clear, is because nobody's punched you in the face. Right. Because I grew up in a neighborhood where if you said something wild and it was contrarian to what the rest of the group believed and you continued you yeah, continue to push with it. shit, you would get punched in the face. So you're standing by your tweets because nobody's inducing violence. I've had wild opinions before. Yeah. And then someone's punched me in the face and my head's hit the pavement and I've regained consciousness and I've gotten up and I've had different opinions. <laughs> Better opinions. Twitter needs a punch icon and it's a fight, Honestly, me, a fight me icon. removing violence. You, when's the last... Dude, I mean, we grew... Again, yes. same shit. 80s, 90s. I grew up... I saw... Countless fist fights in the 90s. When's the last time you saw a fist fight in the street? It's got to be extremely rare. Uh, I, I, uh, the la- I mean, dude. like a real fist fight. The last time I saw a real fist like fight, like a fist fight, yeah, was in the park or something. So, but here's why okay. South by Southwest, Austin, Texas, four, five or four or five years ago. Even four or five years ago is a long time, but yeah, but ahead. it's also because this is if you've been, you've been to South by, I have not. Okay, no, Austin, Texas has this street. Uh, yeah. I, I think I've been sec- to Austin and Moon okay, Tower, and the all second that shit. street. Oh, yeah, Moon yeah, Tower, yeah, same yeah, thing, yeah. but they shut down yeah. that second street or whatever it is, yeah, sixth street, maybe sixth street. Yeah. All it is. All it is is drunken bros from UT, right? Looking, looking for trouble, right? right? That's it. And nine times out of ten, it doesn't amount to anything. But one time, yeah. I caught a fight. I watched a fight. I even I was sitting eating pizza and I watched it happen. <laughs> I think I even said to someone, Brooks Whelan or someone who's next to me, I go, "This guy's gonna fight this guy because yeah. he's he's in line, he's wobbling, and the guy goes, "Yo, back up!" and he keeps pushing the guy because he's kind of on top. And then the guy, <laughs> the backup guy was in the right. The yeah. other drunk guy, he was in the mode of just like. Anybody touches me, I'll fight him. You know that fucking <laughs> fuck him. Let's go. Yeah. So they push, push, and it was like a little baby fight. It got broken up. It was, but that was. But I remember thinking, yeah, I haven't really seen like a, I haven't really seen like a brawl in a long time. And weirdly enough, I got into a fucking YouTube hole just yesterday of all of street, street fights in New York. Yeah, homeless street fights in New York are uh, yeah. a, a, well a constant. Yeah, but Washington Square Park, just guys that are owing them five bucks. And there was one at <laughs> Venice Beach. I just kept yeah. going down the line of fist fights no. in public. It yeah. doesn't. It just doesn't happen as much anymore. It just doesn't. Yeah. But also because fucking, I guess when we got in fights when, when we were younger, I wasn't really afraid of anything. And now I am older, and I think, yeah. God, what if someone has a fucking knife or a gun or some yeah. dumb shit? No, dude. I think about that all the time. Again, you know, I mentioned again, Giannis Papas, History Hyenas, our podcast. Check it out. <laughs> um, we talk about history and nature. It's fucking wild. Um, he, he sometimes will be the guy, uh, and he's open about this. He tweets stuff out with no joke, uh. and it's just some political opinion about something. And I'm, and I'm like, you're, I, I get like infuriated because because we're he, close friends, right? So the, I mean, there's time like every, now when he does it, because I, you know, I've told him like you're only saying this because I, I, I'm going to start punching you, and then we'll see if you stand by. He's like, I'll always stand by it, bro. I really mean what I say. <laughs> now I just sent him videos and gifts of Joe Rogan kicking. You ever, you, I'm sure you, how hard yeah. Joe Rogan yeah. kicks. Yeah, spin I'm kick like, into would, a bag. Would you stand by that point you're making about the wall and how it's a good idea if Joe Rogan kicked you in the stomach? Right. <laughs> I don't think you would. So you really, it's not. You know, what is he? Is he trolling or is he being honest? Is Giannis like doing it just because he wants to get a rise? Giannis is one of those guys. Giannis Papas, go. He's truly, I mean, you know, in my life, the smartest man I've ever, I've ever personally met. He's yeah. so smart that he's almost like autistic, and I don't think he knows what to do with it. Right. That's why you know, comedy. He's great. He's great jokes. Great characters. Opposites attract, right? He's a genius, and you're a I'm fucking, a fucking full dumb on idiot. fuck. I'm yeah. just a garlic <laughs> knot, just sitting here drinking whiskey, <laughs> and so he is so smart and so well read and so thorough. See, keep in mind. Yeah. Giannis's, uh, both his parents, Giannis's mother yeah. was a lawyer that was one of the creators of DACA, like the immigrant, like Jesus, a, a, like a, a famous immigration lawyer. Um, his father is a famous um, uh, lawyer, uh, like orthopedic case lawyer. His brother 
was Bill one of Bill Clinton's lawyers Jesus in the early 90s, Christ. and then Giannis is a Twitter comedian. Right. So <laughs> it's just like... Successful comedian, it's, though. It's extremely successful, but it's funny. Like He's got this character called uh, Mauricio Rodriguez, and it's like he's dressed as like a transgender Puerto Rican woman, which he could have never done today. It's, it's 2011, is when, <laughs> and it went viral. And I'm like, your brother has a law degree from Oxford University in England and Georgetown University here and is Bill Clinton's lawyer and this is what this is, this what, is what you, you do, do. To, this is what you do to repay your parents. Do you ever feel like that's a that's an unjust world when you hear that someone's parents were super successful and then also they also get very successful? That bums me out a little bit. Like like in what sense? Like, well, like his parents are his parents are both No, it's not that oh. everything is not fair, but I yeah, just get bummed fair. that my parents are poor and dumb that I'm like, why didn't I get rich smart parents? Oh yeah, and, dude, my mother, my mother had me when she was 21 years old. My mother was in Columbia Law School. I mean, yeah. my mother um, sorry, Columbia undergrad school on her way to, you know, potentially she wanted to be a lawyer. So my mom's an Ivy League student and um, my father is a criminal. My father actually, like, and I'm not saying that, like I'm talking about like my father was in federal prison when I was a child and they met at a walkathon. My mom was walking in the walkathon. It was like a school event and they were raising money for cancer research. And my dad was doing community service on the side of the walkathon, like a prison halfway house work release program because he, he just got out of federal prison picking up garbage on the side of the road. And my mother had a lapse of judgment and wanted a bad boy in her life and had sex with this guy and got pregnant. And that's my dad. That's your life. Where my mom could have fucking married Giannis's dad. Did they get married or no? Oh, well, yeah, because my mother's Catholic. So the Catholic right. guild, they got married, they got immediately divorced. They got yeah. divorced when I was one. Same. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Got divorced when and I was my one. my dad's also a criminal, by the way. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So what's your dad, what would your dad go away for? It was like, um, like racketeering, money laundering. That's nice. He was like a bookie. Mine was drugs. There, they're all dirt bags. Cheers, man. Cheers. Cheers here we go. Us. White trash. <laughs> fucking yeah, baby. Because that's, I mean, I just think it's like, I, I don't mean it in the sense of, uh, if I don't drink, this is bad luck. Oh, really? Mm. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I don't mean this in the sense of like, um, I love my parents. I, I joke around. They're, I love they're, my they're, parents they're, as well. They're not, they're not stupid. And I can tell you love your parents and you have a good relationship. But they, but they just, um, my mom jokes about it all the time. Right. She goes, I, you know, like, look, everything I've ever done, and I'm going to boast a little bit, I don't give a fuck. Everything Please. I've ever done, I, I did it on my own a little bit. So I, I'm a little bit proud that I'm like, I bought my house. I, 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 got, I yeah. came out here with no money. I started from scratch. Ab absolutely. So my mom is, they're very, you know, appreciative of my work ethic and they always are like, Sorry, we couldn't leave you any money. You know, my parents constantly joke. They're yep. like, oh, when we die, you'll have to pay for everything. You know, it's like yeah. this, you know, because, uh, you know, that's just our our way of life. And and it just, I get jealous when I hear like, oh, yeah, his mom is fucking the one that started DACA. She's a, you know, this progressive right. socialite that has, right. like, I, I just get jealous. I'm yeah. like, I'm never know what that world is like. In, 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 in. I don't think I want it. I'm not saying yeah, I ever wanted it's that. It's just a different thing. It's just, it's like, it's kind of, it's interesting. Yeah. I, you know, from experience, you know, now that I have a daughter and similar, you know, similar story as yours, you know, I, I stayed home in uh, in New York, you know, um, but, you know, I bought my apartment in Brooklyn, you know, all comedy money, all everything. I take care of my father's rent now. He's fell in a little bit of hard times and all that stuff is powerful for me, um, you know, and it makes me feel good about my career choice and what I'm doing in my work um, and, you know, obviously take care of, of my daughter and her mom. But because of these situations that I've been in lately, like with like having to kind of give a little bit to my my family, mm. it's like I'm hell bent on being the kind of father to my daughter where no, I feel like I have to be one of the only people in her life who truly, truly is only here to give to her, never take anything. Right. Because to be to have to 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 have people take from you who like really aren't supposed to take from you, it really fucked me up a little bit. It like kind of blew me away back where I was like, oh, my dad's on hard time. Now he's taking from me. Um, so I don't want to be the kind of dad. That fuck up the relationship? No, not at all. No, no. it's just it was just like a little like gut solar plex thing and kind of just life thing where I grew up, you know, where I kind of woke up and was like, that's a goal of mine. Is to, it, not a goal. It's a, it's a thing that will happen where my daughter can always count on me. Whether you know, I'm sure we'll get into fights, and I'm sure there'll be times where I say she can't go out and do this, and she'll be mad at me and all that. But I want, I never, ever, ever want her to feel like, oh, my father took from me. I always want to be like, oh, right. that guy always gave me, right? Gave me. I'm not saying I give her whatever she wants, but he only he always gave. He never took. Right. So that's like a goal as a, as a parent that well, I have. Let me ask you this: is this is an interesting segue because I just had this conversation with a group of friends about my parents. We 
we joke all the time. Right. They're like, yeah, we're not going to leave you a fucking dime. You know? Right. Even if they had money, the joke is we would never, right? So I... Right. I Your dad's owe, do, doing I, it on blow. Spend I it on always, blow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, my dad, and my dad's gambling it on the fucking, you know, Nashville Predators. My, ga- my, Some, da- my dad always, gambled too. He always... Ga- but my dad would never gamble like on the Yankees. He would always... Like he lost my mom's savings, life savings, which is 10 Gs, but that's still a lot of money in 1984. He gambled it on the Montreal Expos. Can, can I say something? I just was about to make a joke about the Expos. I was like, what are you fucking betting on the Expos? Yeah, yeah no, it's my dad gambler. And my dad gambled on my gender when I was born. He had to pay my uncle 500 bucks. The doctor. The, do- do- the doctor's like, it's a boy. He's like, it's a girl, 10 Gs. It's a girl. It's like, tuck it back. <laughs> Lynn, tuck it back Put for it back the picture. In. Put it back in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but do, do you think you'll... Like, do you think, like, let's say you, let's say, let's say at the end of your career, you have an exorbitant amount of money, right? Okay. Like, let's say, let's Hopefully, say, yeah. Hopefully yeah, we let, all do. but let's say you do so well that it's like, wow, it's like man, nuts. Holy shit. You could either leave it to like a foundation or charity, you know, like, cause Bill Gates gets a lot of shit. They always say like, uh, or Warren Buffett, like, you know, mm-hmm. these guys that they don't, they don't believe in really giving their children all the money. They want to like set them up and then do a foundation and then they can figure it out. Like, would you do that? Or are you the kind of guy that's like, I'm going to give my kids all my shit. I personally think that, um, this idea that we have to help everybody mm. is the capitalist kind of doctrine and a capitalist kind of idea that feeds, and I'm, I believe in capitalism, I love capitalism, I'm a fucking patriot, build the wall. No, I'm kidding, but I am a build patriot. Build two of them. Build fucking, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 um, I'm a, you know, I'm a love America, I love being American, but like this capitalism, this, it's, it's a capitalist idea, because I, like in old times, it was just your family, like you, I, yeah. Listen, I would. I'm sure somebody in medieval times would open their door for someone who needed help. Uh, we're human beings, right? Mm-hmm. But you're born into a family of a of a of a tribe of a small, you know, tribal thing. It's like that's who, Jeanette, who whatever you believe in the simulators, God, whatever you believe in, they've put you with these, you know, odd number of people, right? And connected you through molecules and through DNA and through what the Earth is made of for a reason. What that reason is, I don't think anybody knows the higher reason, but I feel like, with that being said, bring, bring up money, that it's more my obligation to leave that money to who I'm connected with through DNA and through the matter of the earth, like someone like my daughter, than it is to leave it to a foundation. Even though it may be a great cause and all that, right. I feel like that's a capitalist idea that that's what they want you to do because leave that's it. that's how this whole thing works. Right. They need you to spend money. And how do you spend money? Oh, I gotta help everybody. So I buy this, I do this. So, oh, this this goes, you know, I buy this t-shirt, it helps with that cause and this, and all that stuff is great. I'm not, I donate money myself. But as far as like being a guy who, uh, I'm a guy who I, it's, Big for me, family first. I'm totally. a big family first totally. guy. Um, so yeah, but I. With that being said, if I if it, an, ex, an exorbitant amount of money, then I would give a percent. I would certainly leave a percentage to, uh, you know, whatever charity or something like that. But the the 100 percent bulk load of it would go to my daughter. Kid, well, let me tell you something. I, I, I agree, family first, but that's exactly why, on the contrary, I'm not going to leave my kids a fucking dime. And there I can't it is. They see this shit. Yeah. But it, it's not going to go to anybody else, by the way. It's not going to go to anybody else. So it's not going to go to charity. Like, here's been my theory always. Yeah. If, if I make a ton of money, yeah. If I make tons of money. When you make a ton when of I, money. When I make a ton of money. Are right? you fucking kidding me, dude? You got red hair. You're going to make a ton of I'm money. I'm going to make a lot of money. 100%. Yeah. I love how, too, real quick, and then get to your yeah, point, no, no. how comedians will always, or like people will always be like, the, re- the reason why someone's success- like such a trivial shit, like, oh, yeah, no, Santino gets all the movies and he's great because he's got red hair. Not that many guys have red hair, but right, right. you know, he's good. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. such a dumb thing. <laughs> People always pick one thing. Yeah, it's well, like, it's because he's, you know, he's got it. He's walked duck footed. They need duck footed yeah, yeah, guys. No, no, he's you know? Indian. So that, that's what it is. Okay. <laughs> it's never talent. Talent it's, has it's almost nothing talent. to do with it. Right. Yeah, no, he has it because, yeah. Yeah. But, no, but I think I'm never going <laughs> to leave my kids any fucking money because, because that's my, my parents have been like, right. My parents have been like, well, they helped me my whole life until I'm, moved away until it was like you know time for you to be a grown up and that's always kind of our family's thing is like hey I'm I'm there for you when you're young now that you're a man like you just got to struggle and I think part of the struggle is what makes you who you are a little mm-hmm. bit so there's a piece of me that says if I have a ton of money I'm going to spend as much as I can sure like almost all of it and then I'm going to help my kids through everything to get to where they are because you think about like Bill Gates he gets his kids in the best schools the best colleges the best inner, inner circles those those things are so much more important than physical cash being like yes. I got you into a school where every connection every kid there yep. their parent their dad owns plastic you know what yeah, I mean yeah, like yeah. their mom fucking yeah. owns the surgery group oh, yeah. of America so I feel like I'm going to do that and then when the time comes um, that I'm going to die and I st- if I still have money left over 
I'm going to have my kids come to my house because I, I don't want to die in a hospital. I want to die at my home. I'm going to have my kids come over for one last big dinner and we're going to have a bonfire and I'm going to burn the money right in front of their fucking face. I thought you said you were going to burn your body, right? <laughs> I'm going to burn my body in the money. I'm going to stand in the money and burn it all and flick them off. <laughs> uh, listen, dude, I dig it. And I think actually Bill Gates doesn't, he he like, you, like you said, he got his kids into all this stuff, but like he's he does, not, he doesn't give he's money. not going to leave them a billion dollars. He said, he said openly he doesn't, he doesn't feel like leaving them his riches will help them but it won't also by the way those kids are gonna do fucking great great uh, because he did give them a million dollars in their fi- in their each uh, yeah. respective trust yeah so let's be they're yeah, fine well, bill listen you're a great guy but let's be honest let's you're be gonna honest. give some you're gonna fucking give some money fucking to kids money, yeah. let's let's stop being stupid here of course you're not i understand you're not gonna give him a billion dollars but you will give them a million maybe two million Let, yeah. let's stop playing pretend he will i like bill gates but let's be clear um i do think though like with um with like you know, that, that thing, what I said about like, you know, leaving my kid, uh, you know, all the money and stuff. Like, I kind of feel like, you know, why I had, she's my child or, you know, if I have a boy, like my children, it's like, if I got lucky and I worked really hard and I made a lot of money, yeah. what my, what I would hope would have happened if I was a good parent as, as I hope to be and what my goal is to be is to teach my daughter, hey, you have five million in the bank because of because you know of daddy's dick jokes, but <laughs> you you know I've I've given you the tools to know what to do with that, to know how to spend that, to know to still be your own independent person, and just to have this as a life's nest for you and your children right. if, if you need them. Not be the kind of dad where it's like, hey, we got money, and not teach you any rules. Like I want to start. My daughter's going to start. Uh, she's in preschool now. Um, but you know, when it comes time for kindergarten, like you know, me and me and her mom have this debate where it's like she wants to send her to public school because she's like the public schools in New York City are great and they are. Yeah. But I want to send her to private school if I have the financial means, which right now I do, and, and hopefully my career remains that way, so I can send her for exactly what you said. Not that I don't want to spend five thousand dollars a year or whatever it may be on kindergarten, but I feel like the connections that she might mm-hmm. make with these people who are the most likely going to be a higher class of people will give her the connections that she'll keep for the rest of her life yeah which shows up it shows up all the time these connections these connections show up constantly throughout a person's life so that's why i i want to do it that's why people get in fraternal organizations i mean that's why organizations exist i watched this uh, wildly interesting documentary on p on pbs on netflix uh, Ken Burns did one about prohibition. If you, if you, oh, if you I love, seen it, I love Ken Burns. Fuck, shit. it's so that's what good. I jerk it's, off a, it's, to. it's a three. Hundred <laughs> percent. You jerk off to slow I, I fades. I jerk off to Ken Burns in Vietnam. <laughs> Ken Burns the Civil War. It's Ken, so good. Ken Burns baseball. Oh, with the base, oh, baseball. It, uh, it, uh, you ever seen Jack Johnson's um, um, Unforgivable Blackness? Uh-uh. Ken Burns about Jack Johnson, the first black heavyweight. No. Talk about a fucking rock and hot bod. You think you're in shape? Go see Jack John. The way Jack Johnson used to jealous? beat the shit out of white boxers in 1920 is so funny. It's so funny to watch this guy beat the shit out of these guys because the thing here's the thing. Quick thing about Jack Johnson is he he was living in a time yeah. where if you were a black man and you were open about having sex with white women, I mean you you would be murdered. Yeah, they kill you. You could 100 percent be murdered. Like not not being sarcastic. I'm talking about they'd hang you. And Jack Johnson would go into these arenas and be beating the shit out of the white guys and saying like, hey, like to the trainers, like, hey, I'm going to fuck your wife later or talking to white women in the front row with their guys back. I'm going to have sex with you. And the, and he would have sex with all these white women and just be <laughs> open about it and wearing like cool suits. He was like a guy who was ahead of his time. So Jack Johnson, Unforgivable Blackness is in my, I just watched it the other day. It's one of the best Ken Burns uh, documentaries I've ever seen in my life. Kid Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson, Unforgivable Blackness. I need to see that shit. You got to fucking see it, dude. See, I watched a le- I, I watched a less sexy one, but it, it was just historically interesting to me. It was all about prohibition, about how like America's built on hypocrisy. I mean, we're the, we're the, we are. I'm, t- I'm. I guess that's bleeding through in my standup so much now that I, when I saw it, I was like, "This is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about how big a hypocrites we are that we're all liars," and and right. it's happening. In parallel with all the stuff about every movement and everything is like sure. sometimes we don't even know what the fuck we're talking about movement wise. Most times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like prohibition was exactly that. That there was this background this background of these 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 faith based groups that were the temperance movement trying so hard to prove right. that this was the reason that the devil was in America. Like right. this was it. It right. was this. It, it, it wasn't it wasn't internal. It wasn't right. because we don't we don't have self control. It wasn't because people have People have tendencies of, of right. addictive personality, but the, the the biggest crack of all was, which which was for me Al Capone. The Al Capone part was so interesting about 
why Al Capone became such a big figurehead. It wasn't because he was the most notorious gangster. It was because he was the first gangster to kind of embrace the media. He was our, he was like the first gangster celebrity yeah. who truly fucking loved the newspaper. Yeah. He was the first guy to yeah. take photos. He didn't yeah. give a fuck. fuck. He didn't give a fuck. He would walk yeah. out, tip his fucking hat, and yeah. give him a statement. He started the the romance that this country has with the mafia. Yeah, it, it was, was Capone. All because there were way tougher guys in New York and way tougher guys coming out of Boston and Philly, and there were tougher gangsters that were running bigger syndicates, bigger outfits, and doing way yeah. more fucked up shit. Yeah. But the reason that Chicago got such a bad name that became like Murder City, which it is again, what are we doing? But it was it became then because Capone was kind of romanticizing uh, gangster lifestyles. So murder kind of became this like almost sexualized. It was weird. Like yeah. they almost bragged about it. Like yeah. it was like 14 men shot dead. The, 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 the narration was so sexy when you read it. It was almost like a romance yeah. novel. Dude, I went to Eastern State Penitentiary in Philly, which is like, you know, old school jail. Like, it's it's really cool. Uh, you ever been there? No. It's really fucking cool. It's, it's actually like a Quaker design prison. So the Quakers used to believe that like prison was all about reconciliation. Mm. So they would have like, your cell would be like, it was like, you know, thing in the middle and then each just like long hallways. But the hallway was your cell. So like you wouldn't see it. Like guys would get 15 year sentences and never see another person for 15 Shit. years. You had to be alone with your thoughts Oof. and you would just get your food and you would have time to exercise and breathe fresh air. But you were by your, there was no common time. All solitary. So you would lose your fucking mind mm -hmm. not seeing or speaking to anyone. But when I was, Al Capone stayed there, uh, I had time there. So they have his set, you know, uh, his cell decorated and all that stuff. And like, it was like wild to me where I was like, all these people, these tourists, like taking these pictures with Al Capone, buying Al Capone t-shirts. I'm like, that guy was a, like a murderer, <laughs> yeah, he's a like a murderous, a bad guy, bad guy that like would have 1000% extorted you yep. and killed you if he got in the way of his business. But you're just sitting there taking pictures. And it's like what you said, it's like, we just have this romance connection with fucking the mafia when it's like, if you think about it, it's like, why do we love these, these guys? Are criminals? They're gonna right. hurt you. Well, I mean, dude, every, every, like every 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 thug kid, every tough guy I grew up with, their favorite movie is always Scarface. Yeah, and, but the irony is they never notice that. Like the whole thing is literally about. Uh, when you get too big for your britches, you end up dying. You kill yourself. Yeah. But they just don't even see that the theme no. of the whole movie yeah. isn't about how yeah. cool it is. It's yeah. about the, the the apex. The crux of the movie is like this is not a good thing. Yeah. You will eventually die. Did, like you see how much cocaine he had at the end of that <laughs> and that last scene. It's like a mountain of fucking coke. It's awesome, dude. It's I would kill for that much guy. coke, bro. <laughs> yeah, it'd be great. Did I get killed by machine guns? But they, we do that. I, this is exactly why I think when I was young, I used to I used to talk shit about pop culture celebrities, right? Like like you'd say, you know, the Kardashians are an easy throwaway joke of someone's like, oh, the fucking Kardashians. But the Kardashians are just a reincarnation of other people that we've had throughout our history, right? Of course. Of all, we, 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 we are so good at uh, inflating not bad people, but like kind of worthless people, or I, I don't, I don't sure. know how to say it, but like they're just another example of us being obsessed with somebody because they just do what they do, right? And we be and, and not necessarily good. I mean, I'm not saying they do bad things all the time, but they don't really do much on the scale. It's not like they're yeah. fucking saving lives constantly. No. So it's like we kind of like someone that does exactly what they do for what they are, even if you don't agree with what they do. Well, I You'll see, still boost them up. I see, like even like this thing like we have out here in entertainment. Like I had a pilot with CBS right last year, two years ago. Didn't get picked up. Whatever. Um, but we filmed it, whole thing, you know, sitcom pilot, kind of really cool about my life, about my family. And the way, like, it's just conditioned to be on those lots, uh, the CBS lots or any network lots, mm -hmm. like how the talent has to eat first, how the talent oh, has yeah. this, how the, the talent has this. It was like one of those things where I was like, it, it's not for me. Like when they're like, oh, Chris, you can cut the line and eat. I'm like, I'm not gonna. Yeah, why? I'm not gonna because it's like, the truth of this situation is actually the people who are on camera are the most replaceable because there was a situation where a light went out. It's like, what are, you know, who's doing me, that? Are me and Chaz Palminteri going to fix that? <laughs> yeah. The answer is no. no. We don't know what the fuck we're doing. Right. So some guy who's got an actual skill set, I'm not saying we're talentless fucks. I mean, you know, we, we work on stuff and all that and it's different things, but it's like, that's a guy who like, he's not replaceable right away. Like you mm -hmm. can get somebody to read my lines. You could get somebody to play me on the show I created about my life. That's no problem. Yeah. It is a bigger problem to get someone to find out how to fix these cameras and do this stuff. But totally. it's like, it's all reverse. And it's like, like, that's old I, Hollywood. It's that's old Hollywood that still kind of singed its little dirty fingers. It's the same way that like, uh, 
I'm just on a bad kick right now, but it's the same way that agents can still be little fucking bratty, fucking douchey, because they get supported from a system. Sure, you know they get this weird systematic. The mailroom guy, my assistant, these these little things below me, and they get kind of these ego maniacal fucking yeah. attitudes. When you're like. Yeah. Just a fucking dude that makes phone calls and yeah. emails. Let's be honest, you're just a guy who wasn't fucking talented enough to be <laughs> on the other side of the camera because that's what you really want to do. Right. You really want to be on right. stage and you really want to be in movies and you're not good enough. So you still want to be in the business and now you're on the other side right. and that's fine. And let's be also on you probably come from a really wealthy family because Always. nobody fuck you or I couldn't just be like, hey mom and dad, you know, I'm gonna go make twenty thousand dollars a year for a few years and see what happens. It's like, no, you're not. Yeah. You're gonna go get a job at sanitation. Right. Because it's got good health <laughs> right. benefits you know like you got big gonna, hands Christopher get out there and do the job throw the garbage <laughs> but even more said with that like you know like with you know the 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 agents and the industry and all that you know I still think they're all important and of course and, yeah but, but, but it's like the treatment I, is fucked up the treatment's fucked up but it's like I mean now more than I mean now in 2019 it's like you know what you have what you guys with these podcasts it's like well, the power is in our hands. I mean, well, do we talked about that a lot? I think I think it's remarkable that fucking. That, thank God for this. I will say, man. I and I, and I appreciate. I'm not placating. I I appreciate the fanship so much because absolutely because we get to speak the truth that like for a long time, uh, women have had a tough time in this business of being subjugated to nonsense. Right? Yeah. And I've said absolutely. This, and I've said this before. Men get subjugated to things in, in a different way. Not that ours is comparable, but. Men get subjugated in the way it's like, you get treated like shit or like a fucking peasant and a piss and a peon right. because you're not up here yet. Right. You know, we have that same thing, but now that I can call people out, I'll talk about it. Sure. I'll talk about the people that are like, you know who treated me like shit? You know who treats me like shit? You yeah. know, you know who does the wrong thing? Yeah. Because we didn't have a voice. You would just go, well, it used to be, I'm lucky to be here. You know, yeah. that, that, but it's like- all these gatekeepers and now they're not there. Yeah, but that's bullshit because that's of bullshit. Course. Yeah, because yeah. we should be the ones that are dictating. We Absolutely. and them should go, nah, that's good and that's good and that's good and that's not good. Then yeah. we're playing with real fire. It's like, like uh, a month ago, um, I had a special that came out. Um, Time out. Don't be so humble. Let's plug it. Size 38 Size 38 Comedy, Central. Comedy Central. It's actually fucking fantastic. I appreciate I that. Chas Palmateri fucking introduces he you. He did introduce me. And it's, yeah. And and in the intro, uh, you're walking down the uh, street with fucking, fucking with Giannis. Giannis. Yeah. With, with, yeah. So so I let me say let me say before you talk okay. about it, it I, because it won't come genuine out of your mouth because you're you're too nice. But it's a gay. phenomenal special. It's it it is very well done. It's one of those specials where um, there's no frill. It's a great stage. It's not trying to look like this fucking. And he's in an arena and he got dropped in on a Corvette. You know what I mean? Like, there's no fucking frills because the industry does that a lot. A lot. Yeah. A lot. They did. They're like, dude, what if we have that fucking light show in the thing? And it's like, holy shit. It's no. just a guy on the stage on a great, beautiful set telling great jokes for fucking 57 and a half, whatever the, whatever yeah, the timeout whatever, is. Yeah. yeah. But it's a, it is a, I'm being honest, it's a wonderful hour. Um, and people should definitely go fucking watch oh, it. Go see it on ComedyCentral.com, right? I it's yeah, up there, right? ComedyCentral.com, size 38 ways. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, and, and I I was thinking, you know, because I, the, you know, they were pushing me like, oh, do you want this? Do you want that? I was like, you want fire? You want I, fucking fire? I, I was like, don't, I don't think anything about the set or anything about what we do here or there is going to matter if the jokes aren't good. So let, right. just put the camera on me, you know, make me look, you know, nice and han as handsome as you can. And uh, let me just tell the jokes. And they mm -hmm. were like, fine. So I'm, I appreciate you noticing that. But, That's exactly what it is. That's but, what they all should be. That's what every special should embody is like, the jokes are hilarious and that's, that's the end of it. Like every time I, like I love Bill Burr as my favorite comic and it's a like- A real piece of shit. Real piece real of shit <laughs> and another fucking dirty redhead. Um, and, and- He is uh, my absolute favorite. Yeah, and he, every special I watched, number one, two things, if I'm being honest. Number one, I never- remembered what the set looked like or what he was wearing. Me neither. And I never even really remember what the names of the specials are. I just know the jokes and I watch the specials and I love wow. the specials. True. Because I'm just like, all I care about is the jokes and that's what he all only cared about. And that, but that's what moves me. It's like, I'm not buying tickets. To, I wouldn't buy tickets to go see him live because he had a catchy title or because <laughs> right. he, the fucking set was on fire. Right. It's because the jokes were great and they moved me. Right. So so that's, that's what I want to do. I'm like, I just want the jokes. So... Um, a situation happened. I was out here promoting, and uh, I was going to do a late night show out here. And the booker of that late night show was like, "You know, you don't uh, want to say the show, huh? You don't want to say the show? Uh, should I? 
You can if you want to. Fucking late, late James Corden. James Corden. Yeah, I did. Well, I did the show. It wasn't James Corden though. Obviously, James Corden doesn't even know who the fuck I am. Whoever the Booker was, right? Um, who I actually don't know. Um, it was just relayed through my agent. The Booker said, "Oh, I have these jokes. You know, I have a Puerto Rican daughter, and I have jokes on my special and jokes that I do about." my daughter being Puerto Rican and imitating her mm -hmm. um, and doing a Puerto Rican accent because my daughter does she talks like that a little yeah. bit because that's how her mother talks go see him Go. that's what she says go She's to like, him daddy yes <laughs> so that's how she talks and, it, and not only is it real and based in reality which is the most important part it adds a lot of uh, little Character. kick to the joke yeah. the, the jokes are there I've, I've written the jokes but I like it it flows they said you know you can do those jokes but you can't imitate the Puerto Rican accent and I said why and they were like well because you know you're white and we don't want to you know we we don't know that it's appropriate and i said well what? my daughter is puerto rican the accent is puerto rican so that's i'm not making anything up it's my life so i passed on the show then then the time i would have done the show i you know i had that day open i passed on it and burr kreischer and theo vaughn invited me on both their podcasts in the same day and i went from a hundred and two or a hundred and three thousand followers to a hundred and thirty five thousand as soon as the ep well you know after a week or so after yeah, the episode yeah, yeah. came out I'm, i started headlining in 2015 i'm being honest from 2015 to 2019 early 2019 i never or maybe i got one or two bonuses i never sold out but maybe i got one or two bonuses which you know in, in stand up you get incentives for sell as many tickets you get a bonus and if you sell out it's right right Washington DC, Philadelphia Punchline, and Denver Comedy Works all sold out all the bonuses all because of the podcast. Yeah. So it's a different world. If I would have done that late night set and and not done Theo and Bert's podcast, I would have never gotten those followers, number one. I would have never sold those tickets, number two. And I would have presented on stage, the worst part, on this late night set, a vanilla business card bullshit corny version of my comedy mm -hmm. that I would have been nauseous looking at as opposed to doing Theo and Burt's and guys like your podcast where we can just be ourselves and do talk it. and give the audience an opportunity to say I'm invested in this guy or I'm not invested in this guy right. as opposed to just watching five minutes of horse shit right. a five minute commercial right. you're getting to know me and you're saying okay I, this guy's got a long format whatever and you could I really feel the thing is if you hear me on a podcast if you hear, and I really mean this, if you hear me on a podcast after the podcast and you don't like me, I respect that 100% because I gave it my all and I showed you an hour or plus of who I am. And if that's not for you, then I I, I know that I'm really not for you. Then and we're good. Then we're good. Yeah. As opposed to if you said you didn't like my five minute Tonight Show set, that's a problem for me because I'm like, well, you're not giving me a fair chance. That's right. I, I do this corny bullshit. I had to jump through hoops. So give me a shot. Well, they don't but know. here I'm getting a shot and if you don't like it, it's okay. Right. They don't know that we have to do that all the time. They right? don't understand. Well, here's the irony. I did the show to pr promote. I did a show on Showtime called I'm Dying Up Here and I did and I did. You it with, fucking sell out fuck. <laughs> 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 but we talked about this all the time. I said yeah. we, we do have to do stuff that you're like, man, and oddly enough, I did an accent. I did a bit an accent. Wow. Yeah, because they, they wanted to know where I, they kept it going back. We want to hear this Cheeto Santino bit. Where does the name come from? Okay. The name come from? And it's a joke I told on my like first album and it was about me in East LA playing basketball and these Mexican dudes this Mexican dude used to joke with me right. that I had, you know, he used to go, your legs, you got look like you got fucking Cheetos on your legs, dude, like Cheeto leg, like Cheeto dust. That's and funny. he used to talk about it all the time. So I did the joke on the Corden show. Yeah. But of course it comes off so weird and different because I can't do it with all How this How long ago did you do it? Two years ago. Or, well, maybe it was two years ago. I don't know. Yeah, whenever we, we plugged them dying up here. It was me and Jim Carrey now Magical. And listen, and Eric Griffin did stand up. And it was a dream come true to be with Jim on that show. But I oh, did feel weird. I did feel weird. I mean, come on. Yeah. I, it's I like did, your friend. You like no yeah, Jim Carrey it was now. Weird That's being sick. A, yeah, it was weird. It was weird. It was fun. It's Do you surreal. still talk to him? Like or contact? Send him an email and all that bullshit. Fucking yeah, great. Yeah, but he, you know, yeah. Jim is Jim is Jim. Yeah, Jim's Jim's Jim, and I'm fucking, yeah. and I'm you know I'm carpet He's writing fuzz. cartoons of Mussolini hanging upside it's down. Absolutely it's hilarious. hilarious. I, was, yeah. I was I did the Adam Carolla show yesterday. And we were talking about. If you that, haven't seen hilarious. Jim Carrey's, go on his Twitter and look at all the cartoons that he does. But but it was a little bit of an ego check because I was like. I don't know if this is really for me, you know? And right. and it, 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 I did my best to be like the cute guy. It's like, hey, I'm doing the thing. And it's hard. It is hard. And, 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 and America thinks it's like, well, don't fucking do it. And you're like, you, we're very lucky. We get paid a lot of money to have fun and to do our thing and entertain our people that we yeah. like. And you sometimes have to do things you don't want to do. Just like fucking guys that, you got to go to the office some days that you're like, I don't want to fucking do this yeah. shit. I don't want to work during meeting. fucking March Madness no shit. on the Thursday and Friday of March Madness. You got so, me at fucking in right. social security office. So we got to do shit that we don't want to fucking Absolutely. do. Absolutely. And, and, and not to say I didn't want to do it, it was more like that was the impetus not to like, 
give a transition, but after I did um, after I did that again, because I did Conan a couple years ago, I, I created this show that we're kind of fucking around with right now called The Raw Five, where it's five comics do five minutes, they can't do on late night, and then we sit down and we joke for five That's minutes like this. That's a great concept, holy yeah, shit. Yeah, so we're, we're pitching it out right now, because I was like, so many young guys are so good with so much material, that I'm like, they just can't get that on late night. They, yeah. ne- they would never let them put that on late night. Getting a late night comic um, is a specific kind of comic. It doesn't always translate into big ticket sales and you right. know, they're not always necessarily the most talented guys in the world. Some are, of course, but it's like, sometimes you see these guys, they got all these late night sets, but it's like you watch them and it's like, okay, it's great, but it's like, you just, it's really about your format. Like they just have a joke, blah, 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 blah. It's like right. other great comics, Maybe aren't that, but there's shitload more. Like Bert Kreischer is one of the most entertaining comics to watch, but yep. I don't know if he can tell. He can't he tell the machine. He can't tell the machine story in five minutes. Well, he does Not stories that he needs to anymore. But I'm saying, like right. before, he was famous and had that capability. Like Bert Kreischer, I'm sure he could do late night. But you want to see Bert Kreischer and feel Bert Kreischer? Right. You got to watch him. It's got to be. You him. have to be there for. Got to be there. For yeah, him. you have to be there for that. And, Which, and tonight yeah. show is kind of late night shows are kind of like. They're this big separation of like who the comic is and what you really are going to get, which is so true. That's why every time, whenever somebody comes to see me, I always shake their fucking hand and I say, thanks for supporting live comedy. Please keep going to other live comics. Of and, course, and I, me my too. My favorite thing to fucking hear, I was just in Phoenix, my favorite thing to hear is people go, this is my first comedy show. I, I was a fan of yours from the podcast or whatever. Yeah. And they go, I've never been, I've never even done this and God, it's so much fun. Yeah. And I always say, go see another comedian. Please yeah. don't make this your last one. Yeah, no, no, go no. to fucking 10 other, because if they can get the bug to keep spreading the word. It helps us all. Oh, because I think, I think Chris Rock said it best. It was like, to be famous in comedy, is is almost impossible. You have to be so famous that people who hate comedy know who you are. Right. That's that. That's the yeah. only time in, yeah. in, in in TV and film you can be kind of fucking famous and like not that good and kind of just get a ton of work for twenty five years. People are like yeah that guy I know that guy I've seen that guy all the fucking time. But for comedy for someone to come see you pay for a ticket you've got to be embedded in their psyche to that that they sure. want, they need to want to see you because sure. otherwise. You're just a fucking another guy in town that no one Absolutely. knows. It's like another thing. Yeah, I think like now is the time for live comedy because it's like, yeah, all these specials are coming out, the podcast. It's like, that's what people want to do. They want to go see this live experience. And it's like... Because it's way better than this shit. Like, th- th- there is no special. There is no podcast. There's nothing that can compare to the feeling that we get and they have live. Like, live. these are great catalysts for those. But yeah. I always say it's like, you really want to see what the, what work is? Yeah. Come watch a comic like, live. Like, think about all the times in your life. Think about, you know, the audience. Like, think about, like, your gut laughs. Anything in life. It's, I would argue, overwhelming percentage of any gut laugh you've ever had in your life has been because of something another person or because of an incident that happened live right in front of right, you. Right, right live in your in face. Your, not something you've watched on TV or in a movie. Right. You've laughed out loud at TV and movies, but I'm talking about a gut like fuck. when it hurts. Like, you know, yeah. a yeah. guy farts in front of you. That's just a cheap <laughs> thing. But it's like, you're not hearing the fart on TV. You're, it's, you're in the room. Yeah. You know, or like a comedian doing crowd work on you about who you're with. It, you're in the room. You feel it. Right. So like, that's what's important about live comedy. But man, like, you know, like, what what's going on out here like with the podcast and you guys it's like you know it's like funny it's like tim Dillon, who's you know blown up now Love it's him. great yeah it's like he had a good point like we were in new york because he's you know he's a new york guy i'm sure he's gonna move out here any day but he uh we was like you know like our our got like our patriarchs of the comedy world the david tells the colin quinn's the new york guys you know the they're kings, all yeah. great guys great guys you know the number the best but you know they're like taking the train you know like we, we're sitting around like you know we're like fucking be like let's split the bill we're like you know like rogan's you know these guys they're flying helicopters in they're in <laughs> teslas they're in time machines it's like you guys are making millions of fucking dollars and uh, and I, but I think not me by the way. Side, side no, but side. you will. Those you guys will. are making fun. Yeah. No, you will. But but the thing is, it's like oh, you know, a lot of people say now, as I'm sure you know, a lot of people are like oh, um, you know, oh, you just got to get on Rogan, and then your career changes. That's really not true. No, that's not true. You though. have to get on Rogan and and use that platform and be very good on it and really yes Rogan gives you an opp- Joe Rogan gives you an opportunity to showcase potentially your what you have to do what you have to say to pretty much the world but there's plenty of comedians that come and go on that show but the guys like you Theo Burt Joey Coco Diaz all these guys that stick out you stick out for a reason it's just right. Tim Dillon now yeah. it's just and that and that's why Giannis and I talk about this all the time it's it's very the the only time uh, a negative emotion pops up from at least me and Giannis and I think a lot of comedians, or New York guys New yeah. York guys is when somebody 
really isn't funny and really is making it off bullshit. And that's happen and that really bothers us. Yeah. And that's happening less and less now because the comedians who are making it are like, You're no no gatekeeper, no gatekeeper put you on Joe Rogan. Right. Joe Rogan put you on Joe Rogan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, nobody's agent finagle that. Yeah, so I didn't a, call a publicist to fuck yeah, it doesn't exist. No, yeah. yeah. Nobody nobody fucking knew a guy at Sony and now you have a deal <laughs> and we have to watch your horse yeah. shit. Hey my uh, my sister's fucking some guy yeah. at MGM. Like it yeah, doesn't it's not a thing anymore. It's the comedians hold the power and like, you know, right. we have it in, in New York, you know, like Andrew Schultz is doing a great job yeah. and he's giving people platforms and you know we all working together with him. And it's like all this stuff is comedian generated. So it's like in my opinion, the I know it's some of the older veterans would say, oh, it's the hardest time to be a comedian because there's so many of us. But in my opinion, it's like the guys who have talent, the guys are working. Like this is, we have a real chance to like make it and it's like honest now because it's like there's nobody who's gonna say, oh, you have to get into Just For Laughs Montreal Comedy Festival to make it. It's like, no, you can you can just start press record mm -hmm. and if your talent it, and your the, the people decide. Yeah. It's the people are deciding who's good and who's not and it's like a massive pe a mass amount of people are not going to get it wrong. Right. You know well, I mean? well if, if they're they're collective fans, they're fans for a reason, you know. Yeah. Well, I, I always look at it like this. To me, that that whole that the, the the this great this great like exile of comedy, this great like rush of like right. all these people, it to me it's like imagine a pickup game when <laughs> when you were a kid and a pickup basketball game was kind of like there's this weird line of like, do you even deserve to play? And that's gotta be dictated by some of the guys that are already out there and you really have to earn it, right? right. And that's fine. But what if you really are good and you don't have a good enough voice to like have the confidence to be like, hey man, I can hoop, you know? And you don't know yeah. those guys, it's a new street. Yeah. It's like, now, it's almost as if it's open season. It's like, well, come see if you can hoop. You just yeah. have to prove it now. Yes. It's not because fucking you know Jerry, right. you know? It's because we, we let, we'll let you shoot, but if you suck, you can fuck off. Exactly. So that to me, it's almost like, it's almost it's better that there's open, big bigger gates now because now it's shifting out way more. There's way more shit that just doesn't get through. When I think when there was gatekeepers, more bullshit got through then than it does now. Of course, now. way more bullshit. And it's like now it's like, you know, you guys who get like successful like, you know, here it's like it seems like everybody helps each other. You know, you get on my podcast and that podcast and this, but it's like it's all branching off and helping each other and helping comedy. Like the more we help comedy collectively, the better all of us do. Right. I mean, the more people that want to come out and see live comedy, the more chances we all have to sell tickets. Sure. You know, and I feel like for the first time in the last 10 years uh, that I've been doing comedy, it's like, I really feel like that's happening. Like, I really feel like, it, you, you know, a few years ago, it's like, oh, everybody needs to get that part and there's jealousy. But now it's like, there's a million parts right. now. It's like well, when we started, it was way more, uh, it was way more, way more fucking cutthroat, neck and neck, cutthroat. neck and neck. Yeah, I, I feel like when you know, and we kind of started similar times. And yeah, 2009. I yeah, started and here. I met you, and I met you, I met you years ago. I don't even remember the, where we first beginning. met. Um, where it was. Maybe at um, in New York. It, it was in, in it was in New York. Caroline's yeah, something. something yeah, like that. but yeah. it was like our generation of comic. I feel like when we started, it was so fucking. Like, like abysmally angry at other people's small successes, and now it, maybe it's just also time, and you're older, and, and you're more mature, and you're doing fine. Right. But it's just more like I don't give a fuck that that I don't give a fuck when someone when, if somebody goes, dude, that guy sucks. I can't believe he got the thing. I go, I don't even give a fuck at all. I what do I? Yeah. How could I give a shit? I have to focus on my shit, and if it's good, it's yeah, good. Yeah. Now you it's know? like now it's like anytime like a comic's around, and they're like you know like we'll be sitting talking like oh I just got that part in that movie. It's like you're not. Like who cares? Dude? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Yeah. It's like, and that's the last. It's like, yeah. If you ask me, hey, you know, we saw an audition. Did you get the part? So yeah, you know, cool. But it's like, whatever you tell me, you could be like, oh, I'm hosting the Tonight Show tomorrow. I'd give you a fucking dap, and then not just genuinely be happy for you, and then be like, all right, like let's talk about whatever else. Yeah, we're whatever talking. else is real. Like life, it's yeah. not gonna elevate you. It's not gonna make you go higher or lower in my book at all. Yeah. What you're doing or not doing in your career. It's but like if I like thing. you as a guy. I like you as a guy or a person, and that's it. I don't care. You said it, guy. 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 It's Women never are funny. <laughs> 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 now that we, we've we've sucked the dick of comedy talk, so let me transition to something that's really honest that everybody on the internet knows about you is that you don't like black people, and why yes. is it that you think that is? I think <laughs> that they're just weird. <laughs> I paint you in corners that you can't. Yeah. yeah. But Did you, you said like, all that racist stuff about Asians, and now tell me about all that stuff. Well, you know, no. Well, they are hate. just. Yeah. I mean, dude, I got. Did I, I hosted this show on Netflix. Um, Plug it. Years ago. No, fuck it, please. It was called The Ultimate Beastmaster. And it's basically like American Ninja Warrior, mm -hmm. but, you know, uh, for fucking, it threw a beast mouth on Netflix. Did you not want to do it? 
I, no, no, I, I wanted to do it. Well, I mean, I needed the money, so like I didn't. Well, that's want, that's part of it. But yeah. I mean, did you did you go out for it? Or did they ask you to do it? They. What happened was, is I have the same manager as JB Smooth, and they called asking for him. JB. Love JB. They called asking for him, and my manager. Because he's just, you know... He's they said tall, skinny, black guy or guy who looks like a linebacker. Yeah, well, that, that, that's what they were like. They were like, hey, we're calling for JB. want a tall, skinny, black guy. He's like, well, I don't have that guy, but I do have fucking... This guy who's got an Italian's grandmother's ass. And so so they... they So he convinced them, my manager was good, being a good manager, convinced them to use me. And I co-hosted it with Tiki Barber, who's fucking great. Awesome. Tiki, and I'm a huge New York Giants fan. Yeah. So it's like Tiki Barber is like a legend. And, um, and a buccaneer, right? Well, his brother was. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's his right, brother right. was. He that's was a big giant. That's right. That's but Tiki right. retired as a giant. Um, his brother actually is in the Hall of Fame, which I didn't. Tiki's not. Yeah, he is. Tiki's not. No, what? Tiki's not. His brother. His brother's. Well, that's got to really hurt. Yeah, it's weird. Um, I, it has to. But it's got to be so painful when your brother. That's a, that, that's like the, the Manning competition. Like yeah, Archie. Uh, by the way, also took a back seat to his two sons. Isn't that even funnier that Archie Manning was like, "Well, I'm fucking Archie Manning." Yeah. And then those two guys were like, "Yeah, but we won Super Bowls and shit, and like yeah. now we're embedded forever in pop culture history." Yeah. So it's like, fuck you. Like he thought his kids would never fucking be that good. Yeah. Because how can you be better? Th- I mean, his dad, there's Archie Manning's a, su- uh, a Hall of Fame quarterback. Yep. And his sons are like, "Yeah, w- what? Yeah, no Super Bowls. Yeah, loser, <laughs> loser." <laughs> um, um, so. Anyway, I do this show. We filmed it in like April or May of 2016. So a couple of months before Trump gets elected. And, you know, Netflix approved all the jokes. They were basically, it was an international competition. Um, so I, me and Tiki were the hosts of the American team. And they said, anytime another country is competing, your job as the comedian is to make fun of that country and make fun of the competitors of that country. Great. And when America's going, you just go pro-America, no jokes, just salute America and be all about America and get our fans who are watching uh, it in America to be all, you know, great. Because it was on in every country. That was like the big thing with this show. It released in all the countries that have Netflix. So do the show, fine, everything. A few months go by, they release it in December of 2016, two months after Trump got elected. So obviously it's all PC now, can't say anything. The worst type of white guy you could have possibly been is the guy who looks like an undercover cop yelling how much he loves America and hates every other country. <laughs> Dude, I'm- but I'm the rest of the fucking fuck, world. Yeah, I'm Christy, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Fuck. So I, I, um, I got like, I would say teetering on a thousand tweets in a week of what a sexist I was, what a racist I was, what a nationalist fuck I was. I get fired. Netflix fires me. Not because of that. Because of that. What? 100. They put they, other reasons. They signed up for it. They, but, but this is what I mean. Like I the know. The pacification of yes, the, these the, people. Yes. And then it's all that. So, but it's like, listen, did I say what? They had an earpiece in my ear for fucking 10 hours from, you know, we were filmed from 8 p.m. At, at night to six o'clock in the morning and they were just like do jokes do more jokes do more jokes do more jokes and like for example like if you fell off the um if you fell off the obstacle course into the water they called it the beast blood so i just got tired of saying that so one time the chinese team was going and the guy fell off the obstacle course into the water and I, his name was bin fong and i go there goes bin fong into the duck sauce so it's like <laughs> Shit. So, I, so, so I mean, I would say at least 500 people cited that that clip. Racist, racist piece of shit. The kicker of it all is Bin, Bin Fong, Fong probably Bin, loved it. Loved it. Of course he, he did. He retweeted it. Of course he fucking Bin did. Bin Fong thought it was hysterical. And, but I got fired nonetheless. And it's like all these, but it was like this thing where it's like, I remember this father was tweeting at me. How am I going to watch this with my son with these words using? I'm like, why don't you're, the thing is, if you're getting riled up of volunteer firefighters jumping off lily pads through a drag through a dragon's mouth, you have a fucking mental illness. Right. And I feel bad for your son because his dad's a fucking pussy. An idiot. You're just such a pussy yeah. that it's actually indescribable. How can I watch this with my like, kid? Yeah. Making jokes about races. Making jokes about dogs. About sauce. other people. Here's, you know, that's that. I always say that. Whenever I make a fucking uh, a, a racial joke, yeah. whenever I, I, you know who laughs the hardest? The person that I'm fucking joking about. Of course. It's always a white person. Person that goes, yeah. oh God, oh yeah. my God. Yeah. Why? That, that that's the, that my favorite thing about doing like all black shows is that I can fucking joke incessantly about black or being black or sure. being friends with black. All they want is for us to joke about these differences because it makes us closer. That's of the course. fucking point. But that's my biggest pet peeve with stuff like that is the, the tiptoeing of like, 
What can I say? What can I not say? Dude, I got a lot of shit. I did this fucking sitcom. They could have never aired half of the jokes. Now, I did a sitcom for ABC called Mixology that was the ABC turn ABC shit the bed. They turned it into like a fucking romance show. It was supposed to be people in New York trying to fuck at a bar. That's right. what, that was the whole show. Right. And um, I slung so much garbage out of my mouth because my character was this piece of shit who's been broken up with so many times. He's heartbroken, so he doesn't, you know, he has no respect for himself right. or women, treats himself like shit. Yeah. And I made up all these catchphrases. And pumpkin pounder was me referring to bitches that wanted to fuck redheads, right? And 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 that and and, and by the way, but 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 today, half of the jokes and all the stuff that we made up, oh, they would have ripped us to. Sh I mean, even no. then, this was two thousand and, you know, I don't even know. Uh, this is two thousand. This is six years ago, whatever. Even 2013, then, 14, people were kind yeah. of still not cool with it. You know right. what I mean? Like people were like, oh my god, he that's so crass of him. I mean, critics ate me a fucking live really? as if this was me I was like yeah. dude it's a it's this jokey dude his whole thing is to just be ignorant and annoying stupid it's funny by the way it's fucking funny but like we said in the beginning of the podcast being outraged is actually a career now it, there's so many people out there a lot of these bloggers and people are like if we saw if they solve the problems they'd have no career yeah, so they don't want left. you to solve the problem right that's they why don't, Nothing they, can be that good. That nothing can be that good because otherwise they'd be fucked. Yeah, because then what are they going? How are they going to make money? Right. They, you know, okay. they're, they're fucking. Their they, their whole career is there has to be problems. Yeah. They have no incentive to fix anything because the truth is there's really not problems. Right. That's the truth of the you situation. Just make it up. Yeah, you make you, shit you, up. You have to make shit up to make it fucking feel good. It's the best good. time to be alive right now. Well, in we're this fucking country. killing it. We're fucking killing it. You know it. why? Because we're straight white men. That's right. <laughs> That's what this show is going to be called. Dude, you want to plug some stuff right now? Because I'm going to let you go. You got to go do yeah, shit. When is this podcast coming out? Uh, it, it, this, a Friday. Uh, this, this Friday. This Friday. This Friday. What I really need, you fucking guys, what I really, I'm looking at the camera right now. I'm saying this loud and clear. Do it. I need you guys to come. I got a weekend at the end of April. It's called Chrissy Clam. It's called fucking Chrissy Clam Chowder Weekend. I'm taking over New England. Chrissy Clam Chowder Chris Weekend, Chowder. bro. Thursday, April 25th, Wall Street Theater, Norwalk, Connecticut. It's my first attempt at a theater gig, a solo theater. That's fucking awesome. Thank you. I need you guys to come buy some tickets. Wall Street Theater, Norwalk, Connecticut, April 25th. Then April 26th, 27th, I'll be at Laugh Boston. And then April 28th, my second attempt at a theater. It's called Empire. It's in Portland, Maine. Go get tickets, please. ChristyComedy.com. My dad has a bet with me that I can't sell the theater out yes, in Norwalk, can. Connecticut. So prove him wrong because either way I'm going to lose the guarantee because I'm going to have to fucking pay my dad. So <laughs> April 25th, Norwalk, Connecticut, Wall Street Theater. And then my podcast, History Hyenas, at History Hyenas on Instagram and at Christy Comedy for me for anything else. That's right. ChristyComedy.com. Go buy those tickets. I'm going to retweet that shit when it comes out so we can plug. Appreciate People got to go see that fucking shit. Go Please. support this you motherfucker. You got fans in Connecticut? I got fans all over this motherfucker. I have a lot. In fact, Boston's one of my favorite cities to go to because because they come the fuck out every time I go there. Absolutely. There hasn't been one time I've gone to Laugh Boston or in the Boston metro area and people have not just showed the fuck up because something about that city, they love to fucking talk shit. They love to have a good laugh. They don't take themselves serious even though somehow no. they do, but they don't. They you know like what I mean? guys who are funny and they like comedians who are funny first. They don't want to fucking be told some political well, they don't, bullshit you, you know what, You know what it is? Most of America doesn't want to be told uh, that they're dumb or that they're less than. People are tired of being going, people are tired of hearing somebody go, fuck it, you think this and fuck you and fuck that. It's like, just fucking make me laugh and let's have a good time. Let's yeah, fuck. come so on. So if you want that shit, go to ChristyComedy.com and follow him on all that social media platform um, on Instagram, Christy Comedy as well. All of it. See all that shit. For me, AndrewSantino.com. I got almost nothing to plug, sadly. I'm going to UFC with Rogan. We're doing a show in Atlanta, but I think that bitch is sold out. And then in 420, I think it's almost sold out too, but that's also with Rogan. I'm not alone again until June because I'm doing a TV show. Uh, but in 420, we'll be down in... San Diego in a fucking arena for the first time. I've never done an arena. Wow. Blow my fucking mind. Holy shit. 12,000 people. With Rogan? Yeah, San fucking Diego. Good. San Diego, is it where like, uh, the, I guess. Who, the where Viejas the, Arena. So is that like where like who San plays. Diego? You know? I don't know. San Diego State maybe? I have yeah. no idea. Dude, I have no fucking idea. I, I, real quick, the only arena I've ever done is was Comics Come Home. You ever heard of that show? Comics yeah. Come oh, Home yeah. in Boston? Mm -hmm. You ever did it? No. So it was at the Boston Guarded. Um, so or uh, whatever they call it now, it's not the call the Boston, TD. the TD Garden. TD I'm sorry, Garden, but yeah. it's all you know Boston Garden. Nah, it'll always be the fucking yeah. Boston Garden. So it was Dennis Leary, Ray Romano, Louis C.K. You know all these guys. Um, myself, Stephen Wright goes up first. Boston legend, fucking in islands, murders, murders. Dennis Leary because I was like the new guy doesn't 
do any time between them. Just goes next comics from New York. Oh, fucking fucking fifteen thousand booze. Asshole. But and then I got out of it. Kurt Schilling was in the front row, and I got out, and it was like I just played with it. It was fun. And Dennis after the show, he's like, I did that because I knew that they love you. So uh, it was like kind of like him welcoming in. Yeah, it's a good check down. It was though. cool, but it was just like that was a funny, really funny thing that he did. You know, but that wouldn't work the other way, by the way. If it was yeah. a New York show and like this guy's from Boston, they wouldn't have given up on that. The New York guys are like, fuck this fuck fucking this guy, fucking fuck this guy. guy. Boston does have good love, man. Go see yeah. the, go see Chrissy's New England clam tour. Chris, Chrissy clam chowder. <laughs> Hashtag Chrissy clam chowder. Thank you for coming, Thank- dude. Love you. Come on, dude. Fuck it. Whisk, 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 whisk. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. <laughs>